So today we're going to take a look at making a preview script for terminal programs like LF and Ranger which support file previews. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the first thing you're going to want to decide is what sort of method you actually want to do with your file previews or how you're going to categorize the different files. So I would say that there are three categories and then one that's kind of cheating. So I personally use file extensions to decide what sort of files things are. But you also have the option of doing MIME types or a hybrid approach where you take the file extension as the main categorizer or the MIME type as the main categorizer. And then when you select one of those, then you'll use the other type to actually, you know, do a more granular look at the different types. So why would you pick one over another? So there's a couple of reasons. So the reason I use file extensions is because with things like plain text, there's a couple of different types of text you can store within plain text. So you have like your general plain text, obviously, but then you also have things like your RC files, you have your markdown files, and there's a couple of others like that. And I want to do a more granular sort of approach to those. So instead of having everything that's in plain text just highlighted the exact same way, I want to highlight my RC files differently, I want to highlight my regular plain text files differently, and I want to highlight my markdown files differently. And you just can't do that when you're using the MIME approach. So a benefit of the MIME approach though, is that you don't actually have to worry if your file type extensions are missing. So if we just try that with one of them. So I've got this Angular data here. So this angular.json file. So if I was to check the file extension right now, it is a .json file, okay? So that's we all agree on that. But if I remove the JSON extension, what's the file type then? So let's actually try that and see what it says when you try to query the MIME type, because this is one of the benefits of using MIME. So to check a program's MIME, or to check a file's MIME type, the way you do this is with the file program. So I'll just kill my compositor so it's a bit easier to see. So this program right here, and you want to use either the dash i option or the dash dash mime type option. Dash dash mime type just gets rid of the extra information, so we're going to use that one. So dash dash mime type, and then dot angular, angular that one. And as we can see here, it's still an application slash JSON. So if I was to put that file extension back there, so put the JSON extension back on there, and we run that again, uh, actually, now that the file name's changed, there we go. So it's still a application slash JSON file. So that's one of the benefits of using a MIME type. So if you, for whatever reason, you are missing a file extension or you accidentally change some file names, you delete the file extension, or you download a file that doesn't have a file extension on it, but you know that it's like JSON data, or you know that it's, I don't know, Python code, for example. I th don't know, wait, will Python code do it? No, it should, because HTML has its own MIME type, so Python should have its own MIME type. I'm pretty sure it does. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But that's also one of the problems with MIME types. Not every single sort of file you want to handle is going to have its own sort of MIME type. So that's the problem you have with Markdown with plain text there, because text slash Markdown isn't a MIME type, and your RC files don't have their own special MIME type. They're all treated all as text slash plain, so there's no way to do individual handling. And this is where the hybrid approach comes in. So the hybrid approach is where you either take the MIME type or the file extension as the main categorizer. And then when you select one of them, you do a more granular approach. So you could say you want to do everything by MIME types. If you run across text slash plane, then you will check what the file extension is. So if it's markdown, do this. If it's an RC file, do this. If it's regular plain text, do this. And that's going to give you the most powerful way of actually categorizing your files. The problem you're going to run across with that is, it's just a problem with preview scripts in general. The more complex you make your script, the slower it's going to be. So you have to actually keep that in mind. So you can do lots and lots of processing and have it perfectly categorized for every single type of text file you can have. And it just looks exactly the way you want it, but it might take two or three seconds to load something. And that's completely useless for a preview script. So you have to keep in mind that this is something you're going to be cycling through very quickly, especially if you're like scrolling through all of your files. Like if 
let's say we just bring up LF. If I'm doing this, your preview script is running for every single thing that you're going over. So you don't want to make it so it's actually going really slowly, obviously. So as I said, I'm using the extension approach because I don't really care if it's missing a file extension. If it is, that's fine. I'll just let my default handler handle it. If that can't actually print it out, I'm just going to miss the preview. Generally, you don't run across situations where you're missing file extensions, so it's normally not a problem. I haven't run into any of those problems unless I force my system to actually be in that situation, so you're probably not going to run into it either, but maybe you will. Maybe you're just doing something weird with your computer and you lose file extensions for whatever reason. So let's actually just have a look at my preview script. So I've got this in my script slash LF. You can store this anywhere, obviously. It's just a script file, wherever you store your scripts. Here is my preview. So I was going to do something with head before, but not right now, at least. I might mention that a bit later in the video. Okay, so this is the way that I'm doing it. I've got this big case statement right here, and we're checking what the argument that's passed. Generally, the file name or the file path is going to be passed directly into the script, so you can just run over it with a case statement. This is how Ranger does it. This is how LF does it, and I'm pretty sure this is how... Um, Fuzzy Finder does it as well. There might be some different ones for random other programs, but generally this sort of format will work for a preview script. So the way that I'm doing this, as I said, I have this case statement. And with a case statement, you can actually do a regex search. So I'm just using basic shell script here. I'm not using any fancy bash stuff or any fancy Z shell stuff. Well, this is just plain shell script because I don't really see any point of using the extra extensions for something like this. So let's take this markdown one, for example. So what we're doing is we are matching on star dot markdowns. This means match on anything dot markdown or for PDF, it's anything dot PDF. So the programs you're gonna use for this is obviously gonna be different depending on what sort of programs you wanna use. So for PNGs and all that, so I'll just bring up an example. You go and actually, I'll just bring up a video example because that's an easier hotkey. So this is what my previews of video files look like. So. Obviously, I don't have every single video format in here. I just have MKVs and MP4s. And this is one of the benefits of building up your own previewer script. You don't have to just drop in something massive like scope.sha, which has all of these file extensions, which most of them you're just never going to see on your system. And this ends up slowing your script down. You can just use the extensions that you run into on your system. And if you run into anything that isn't supported, then you can just add that in when you need it. So I'm just using media info for MKV previews and MP4 previews, and I'm doing the same thing for JPEGs and PNGs as well. I'm not gonna show you those because it's basically the same, just information that's more relevant to images rather than videos in that case. And then for Markdown right here, as you can see, I'm doing special handling for Markdown, whereas just for the general case statement right at the bottom, I'm doing everything with Highlight. So Highlight is just a general preview script that'll just take whatever you pass into it and try to highlight it. If it can't highlight it, then it's just gonna basically do a cat. But for Glow, let's, I think I've got one in my home directory. Here we go. So as you saw, it took just a second to load because it is a little bit fancier than the other preview script I had. But this is how Glow looks. I do like how Glow looks. I'm willing to sacrifice a bit of loading time just for something like this. It isn't too slow, but as I said, the more fancy you get with your previewing, the slower it's gonna get. And then for PDFs, I'm basically just taking a PDF file and then literally converting it into text. So I'm not even gonna bother showing that one. And then for archives, there's actually ways to list out the files that are in various archives. Not every archive type will let you do it, but for these ones here, you can do it like this. And then as I mentioned before, I wanted to do special handling on my RC files. So for that, I'm actually using another preview script called Pistol. Not because I want to use a preview script, just because it it highlights the text the way that I want it to, and I don't have to write my own theme for it. I know that I can do a nice looking theme with Bat, but I'm, I haven't gotten around to writing a theme for that. So right now, Pistol is my drop-in replacement. I just want it to look like my terminal theme, and Pistol will do that. So I did mention using head with these lines right here. So the reason I mentioned that is because if you run across a file that is let's say 20 or 30,000 lines long, for example. I know you're not gonna run into that a lot, but I have occasionally, like usually it's because of just really dumb things that my lecturers will give me. I'll have these massive files that I have to like parse with like a Python script or something like that. So I've got these massive files that may be sitting on my computer. And if I run across that with my preview script and I'm gonna do something like, let's say 
running a highlight on it. Now, highlight's not a slow program by any means. There are quicker ways to do text highlighting, like with Go using the Chroma library, but highlight is quick enough generally. But the problem is that even if it is quick, you're gonna run into a point where no matter how quick it is, you're gonna start slowing down your system. So you might wanna cut off the number of lines you're actually highlighting. So that would be one of the reasons you would do that. So if, for example, you do that with like head and then pipe that in like that. And then instead of using this, you just, yeah, there we go. This is how you would end up just using head instead of just using highlight. You would just pass into head first and then pipe it into something else. But the other problem you're gonna have with that is that maybe then head is gonna actually be slower than just highlighting the entire file. This is your ultimate problem with preview scripts. I have no way of telling you what the best way of doing it is. It's gonna entirely depend on your system, the sort of files you have on your system and what you're willing to deal with. Generally, I'm not gonna run into big files. I'll occasionally do it, but typically I'll delete those files when my courses are over because I don't, on my normal day-to-day -day basis, I don't typically run across files like that. But as I said, you might, so you might wanna consider actually cutting off the number of lines you use. So I don't know, as I said, it'll depend on what you're doing. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over except for the fourth type of preview script. And the fourth type is copy someone else's. Generally, they're gonna they're gonna work fine on most systems. Like, if you want to use my preview script, it's on my GitHub. You could use the scope.shar file. Scope.shar file from Ranger works well enough. It's a little slow because it's got so many things that it has to case through, but it works well enough. Or you could use Luke Smith's for his LF. Actually, I don't know if he's got previews in his LF. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Or you can just find some random other preview script. Like you could use this program down here that I mentioned before, Pistol. This is a preview script right here. I did a video on that as well. Um, yeah, so if you just don't want to think about your previews and you just want them to do just work, then use someone else's preview script. They've probably thought about it more than you have if you're just thinking about starting it now. But I enjoy, I enjoy writing scripts like this. It's not the quickest way to do it, obviously, but... I enjoy what I do and it makes good content for the channel. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. Down below, I've got all of my social links. There's way too many to read out now. I've also got my support links down below. There's like five or six different ways you can support the channel. So feel free to use any of those, but obviously you don't have to if you don't want to. All the videos will remain available for free, but any help will be really appreciated. And up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything. If you've got any ideas for just random tutorials you want me to do, or just various other things you want me to cover, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do them. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now, and I'm out.